All right, if you don't know what's going on in this project, I'm just gonna kind of show you. I bought my wife this Wrangler for Valentine's Day and it's currently December. I told her I'd have it running by the summertime. Well, let me walk outside where there's light. You, can, you obviously see what's going on. Well, there's skylight, but uh, it was a 2.5 four cylinder, five speed, which are actually very hard to come by. And there's nothing wrong with it. A guy just made me an offer on the engine, so I sold it. And what it is, is like the 5.2 liters V8, you can't give them things away. So I had a bunch of them. So I did the math, I was like, I can sell the engine transmission transfer case, comes out to about $2,500. The 2.5, the five speed and the transfer case. And I was like, if I sell that, and then I can custom build a, uh, 5.2 for literally nothing just time so what i've got oh that's the other kicker too hey, I, I didn't want the crappy v8 transmission so i'm getting a aw4 so you can see just a common v8 i use the old school harness those are a little easier to do the one wire hookup and just got a 96 model aw4 took the bell housing off got the converter so let me show you those here's the converter it's the aw4 converter and if you didn't know, well, I'll get on the bell housings. I had to cut the, uh, I guess you call it starter, reluctor wheel, whatever. I had to cut it off and actually weld it to this converter. Well, then you can see these bungs. That's the original AW4 bungs. I've took those, cut them off another converter, added them to this one in the place to fit the other flex plate. And I had to add some washers too, but let me get them down. So the, this transmission does not come off. It's one piece, one housing, whatever you wanna call that casting. So I cut it off. Well, then I carried these both to a machine shop. He put this on the table and then Ian milled it down to whatever I wrote down, uh, I think three and a quarter, something like that. And I had to have that part for the starter to catch in. It's got, uh, yeah, I can show you. It's got like a, like a bung that sticks off in there to keep it from wiggling around. So I had to keep that much of that. Yeah, three and a quarter. So that's what that's machined down to. Well, AW4s take a separate bell housing. So he took it, flipped it over, and it went to 2.5. So he milled it down to this is the piece I need. So now I'm going to put it like that. And now it needs to be centered. So hold on again. So I drew this out, which is gonna be very hard to make out, carried it to a machine shop, and then he drew a professional drawing of it. So I've got that, I carried it to the same guy that did this, and I mean, I'll give him credit, he didn't even charge me to do that because I wanted this done, and he works for big companies, makes way more money than that job right there would've paid, and I completely respect that. It's like me, I always tell people, I was like, I can change your brakes, change your oil, but I feel like I'm a little overqualified for that, so same principle there but my brother finally got a lathe going and i have no idea what i'm doing so i'm fixing to go make that piece i don't know if i explained myself what i was what i'm doing the two bell housings are now uh in milled on a flat table so when they bolt together they're flat like this so i got that part covered now i have to figure that out so got a piece of aluminum and I'm going to make this spacer, or not spacer, I, I'm gonna call it an adapter. That way it'll stick in the back of the motor and it'll stick over the transmission pump and I'll stick them together. And then as they're together, obviously I'll have to apply pressure and then that'll be flat, it'll be centered this way. And then I'll just have to start welding. Not a welder, not gonna look good, it's gonna work, I think. So this is some lathe Justin bought off GovDeals. Deals, yeah. come from a school i guess they just got a new one like i said i've never run a lathe in my life i get the concept but all this stuff i'm gonna have to learn all of it it's actually i think got digital readout and all that so good luck kind of scared step one we don't have a chuck that's big enough to accept this to go all the way through so it's got a butt up there and then luckily he gave me a uh, pilot hole i guess you'd say so don't even know what this thing's called but we run it up there Stuck it off in there, so it should be relatively centered. Now we gotta figure out how to turn it on. We don't have nothing to cut with yet. We gotta figure that out. Oh, we don't have no cutters, so we gotta figure that out. 
He just bought this and he had to retrofit it to fit there. And y'all probably get A and this and it's all these are different gears and you have to match A, B, and then I guess that changes the way that runs. So it's a lot of learning for nobody to teach you. Bought it and then we gotta learn it ourselves instead of somebody hands-on teaching us. It literally came with no tooling whatsoever. Like it didn't even come with a chuck or a jaw, free jaw chuck. But we got a good deal. Yeah, still ain't even used it. I would assume it works. All right, so luckily the guy gave me, or sold me, whatever, uh, enough to do two of these. So in case I screw it up and don't know what I'm doing, I'm, I got enough to do this side's one or I can cut it in half, throw it away and do this side. So. I think right now, I'm not a machinist, the OD down here does not matter. The OD right here where it's going to pile it in the crankshaft matters. So 1.805 is what I'm going to try to get the entire piece, then worry about this step, and then worry about that, and then I guess you'd flip it around and we'll start the literally the boring process of that. So we're just going to try to, is that a cutter? Should be. Looks like brass. No, it's carbide supposed to be or carbide. something. Okay, so I think this is two inch and we gotta mill it down. I don't know how much you can take off, but we'll just start slow and figure out how this trolley system works. All right, we've learned a lot. And the first thing we've learned that it's hard to get it trued. We thought that the little pilot here would center up, but it didn't work out quite right. So getting the indicator out, we got it on slow RPM and then we'll try to just get it close as possible. So we, Justin only has a digital one. I don't know if this is going to be uh, usable. If you had an analog, you can watch the highs and lows and just keep bumping it down to the right. So probably just go get my gauge real quick. Don't take advice from us. I'm just videoing something I'm doing. Neither of us know exactly. We have no idea what we're doing. But, okay, so don't even matter the numbers. Clear on. See how much easier that is to read? Yeah, that's about 10,000, so. So well, now, why, we don't even have to have this turned on. Hold on a second. Just do it manually. Yeah. So I think the number 45, yeah, 45 was our high, I believe. But does that mean, which way? Hold on. Is that down or up? Yeah, go to 40. Uh, so that. Yeah. Keep in mind, this metal is not true anyway, so. Yeah, it's pretty rough metal. Kind of boring, but kind of cool. And this, well, a professional would have a four jaw and they would be adjusting on the four jaw. Well, no, they wouldn't center it out here. I don't know. Would you say it's good enough? I think it is. Your so. phone's ringing. Uh, yeah. So turn it on before you push your center. That and then. Back on A. Is that still on? Oops. Gotta find some gears here. That's that could be better, but that'll do the job for I what I'm doing. Do so now he's gonna hammer that thing off in there to support it. Is it locked down? I think it is. It was. I think that's good. So now we need to not forget to tighten the chuck up. Dex likes this break. I like it too. Yeah, I just keep it. This up. So now we're gonna fully tighten that. And I think we're good to go numbers all right so we're trying to get x zeroed out oh well that was easy enough <laughs> but he just run it up there i guess you could do it while it's turned on but he was just spinning it by hand yeah it's, it's pretty close i mean that's close enough for us so now now i know a rough idea of how much i'm taking off to get to my 1.805 yeah professionals anybody know how to lock this one down we're not really like live right now <laughs> We'll get her figured out. Legitimately about an hour later, <laughs> we've got something. We're about one, nine, three. What all did we just learn? We just learned. We fiddled around forever. Let me start fresh. It was feeding so fast that it was leaving like squiggly lines. Could not figure it out. And I know I'm not gonna sit here and take time to show y'all all these numbers, but like these are actually the same charts, but this one is threads per inch if you was threading rod. This is 
pitch for millimeters if he was threading for millimeters if he was trying to build that right there that's for these okay we are not doing that we're just doing simply feed so we got down to the slowest number you can change abc all this all these change and make different ones and we was on the slowest one and still it was leaving squiggly marks so justin fiddled around there what'd you learn i think this is for thread and rot it goes super fast and whereas this if you go down which you can't do it now because it's not running it feeds this one if you go longitudinal it feeds this way but it's like 10 times slower yeah so all of them have different feeds i ain't thought about that if he was going in to cut something you don't want to stand there and feed it you can set that up to feed in so like i said got these dialed in and we got to go down just a little bit farther but we're learning and we didn't we was confused earlier too these are your speeds on that i didn't even know it's got a high and low so it's on low and this has to match these so every time we'd speed it up when we was trying to figure out the squiggly lines when we'd speed this up to get rid of the squiggly lines <laughs> it would actually speed this up and just it was just because of catastrophe there's, there's probably so many people laughing at us yeah right i have no shame in admitting i don't know something some people that offends like tremendously i could care less i don't know there ain't no reason i should know so we're gonna get it turned down and let's see after we get our od uh i guess we have to start working on oh gosh oh my goodness we got to work on angles <laughs> you're gonna have to do that by hand because i don't know how in the world we're gonna do i've that. seen scott turn and yeah we'll get it figured out but probably do that yeah, one we'll have to turn this whole table and use this feed to go that way yeah man okay i'll be back so if you follow me if you don't cool other day we was tearing down core motors just so happened we have a 5-2 crank over here and that's what we was confused on numbers but i had it at 1.805 which is about there because i didn't at the time we didn't have a lathe and i was i didn't want to carry it to this guy and then it'd be off just a little bit so i put too small of a number so i made sure it fit now we're going to try to be right on par with the numbers in case you know if we have to put it back on there we do but i think they actually measure 16 we're going to go 15 so it'd be very very snug yeah cause i think that other crankshaft actually is a well no it's they all should be the same i don't know what i'm talking about all right so justin had me confused here i thought i was just thinking ten thousands no that's hundred thousand so we got to take uh, about 90 something thousands off both sides so we got a ways to go so we figured out one thing is we was feeding this way now we scroll it back over to there and get it close and then click the feed to go this way and that way i don't know it just seems to work better and that's what that ain't too much that ain't too much that's 200 you just said I'm so curious how accurate that actually is to the outcome because 200 would mean it would be at 1.800. What I was going to say when I picked the camera up, I let Justin check and then see how much more we can go and then I check to see how much more we can go. So that is not 100% accurate. To That's what I said. When you feed this in and out, there's slack in that. I kind of so. figured it had slack in it. So. so it's kind of a rough estimate of what you're doing. And then once you get start getting close, probably start going off your numbers. And That's what I was thinking. That's just a rough estimate, but no machinist is going to use that to outcome on there. I mean, just variables and all that. So just a reference number and then, yeah, I'm getting there. I figured out, like I was just going to turn the entire piece down and it would have worked but i didn't realize how slow this process is like down here on the end i've got to get that from two inches down to like a half an inch so that'll be a long process there i was thinking this would take like the rest of the afternoon that's why i started this it's friday afternoon didn't want to start nothing started about two o'clock and it's going on five and uh we don't even have the first step done we're, we're learning as we go yeah we're we're learning, we don't really trust those numbers up there. So we're trying to learn these, but they're too... Oh, my bad. <laughs> Did I move it? I don't know. I don't think so. I think it's what this part really won't even matter. The 
stuff back there that matters this is gonna be sized down anyway all right well, i'm still learning evidently so now we're trying to cut this this portion right here and the bit is not for cutting like a straight shank well like this you couldn't get that in there to cut a straight thing so i think we got another bit that's like actually angled off to the side so that's what we need to so we're swapping that out and then start downsizing i still got to learn how to do a ramp i'll figure that out this step's got to go a long way we're almost there though we're actually going from two inch to under an inch that's that one right there then i actually wrote this wrong so if the guy at the machine shop had did this this would have been a yeah i guess throw it away because this is supposed to be fifty thousands and that's five hundred thousand so not a machinist not numbers just a simple mistake i made one decimal point is all it takes you can't tell it's raining really hard but i want to show you what's fixing to happen so this is a gopro you're getting filmed off of right now and i've got a new camera and the reason why i would expect five six hundred dollar gopro to be pretty good and they're fine for trail riding but check this out like all i want to show y'all is these numbers like try to read that made in china it, it just never will focus and that's relatively big so i may have i may be maybe recording wrong i don't have the settings right i just got it yesterday but i'm gonna swap to it from this point forward watch i'm gonna show you one more time try to read numbers now I've got this thing. It works just fine. It was made in China, just like that. So, does better focusing. But like I said, might get something off. I don't know. I just got it yesterday. But for this stuff, I feel like you need to be able to see good. So, I got a bunch of these things now. So, if I remember right, this has been about a week or so. I think we're done. I think everything, the little steps there. I think y'all can actually see now, I believe. Focus, yeah. That's step. So at this point, I gotta cut it off, get it choked up in there, and then start wallering that out. I got it out of there, and that's what I was, I'm pretty sure I said this before we quit the other day, but I would rather have it too big and have to take a little more off because if you go too less, you're screwed. So I marked, I know that's some very scientific uh, specific, but I was just curious, it should go I think it's gonna be perfect. It's obviously tensing up, but that's on the rush. So I think if I bang it off in there, I may have to thread it to get it back out of there, but sweet. There's a little bit of rust on that one. So I don't have no light, but yeah, I could probably clean that up and it go off in there. I ain't thought about that. Yeah, I'll just tap it when I get done, drill and tap it, and then it'll go into the, oh, wow, way off in there. But I might make a plug before I start, but it'll push itself back out of there. So now I took it out. I wasn't supposed to. And now I got to put it back in to cut it off. Let me figure that back out. So now I got it choked up. I had it just lightly clamped down. And now that y'all can actually see numbers, it could be better. But like we say, this stuff's probably not even true to begin with. And I'm actually back here. So that number would kind of cancel down. So now this is obviously not going to cut it. So I've got the straight cutter here and I have to get it all set up perfectly. And yeah, we'll cut it off there and start boring, literally boring it out. So I got it dialed in, run this puppy up here, stuck it off in aluminum, got all that locked down. And still we ordered some cheap China tooling, but it's going to get the job done. So I had to scoot this forward, wound up busting piece of it off there. I didn't even know. I thought it sit flat against the back, but it didn't. So now something I learned after I made these measurements, I learned this from Steve Morse. I, if you watch the first videos, I just shoved the converter off in the crankshaft. Turns out it has to pull back and have room to push in and push out. In my case, for my wife driving a Wrangler around, I don't think it actually matters, but I'm gonna add just a few thousandths. Maybe it'll pull it back and be on the safe side. It was like 300 and, well, three inches and 30 thousandths this way. I added just a fuzz of it. My only kicker is, I have to ask Justin this, I don't know. 
when I get down to close, do I get rid of this thing and let it fall off? I would assume, but I might just get it really close and uh, get real close and just hit it with a hammer because I'm gonna be drilling it out anyway. And then you can, yeah, then you could probably just come back and end mill it off there. Literally every time I do something, I'm learning. So it does feed in and cut itself off there, but I'm a little scared, so I'm just gonna do it by hand. All right, you remember how to turn this thing on? Yeah, let's put it on low speed and then for some reason the lights oh you gotta not turn that down you gotta turn this down Oops. somebody puts some stuff in there and do it. so we're on middle middle which would light be lights on 550 that should be good you know you think i should slow it down no 550 should be good okay so not worried about feed not worried about feed that's how do you turn how do you turn it on? Pull? Nope. Nope. You need to turn in this direction. Oh, that's easy enough. So now safety glass. I can't see my mark. That's okay, this up turns off. Yeah. So down goes that way and then up goes this way. Yep. Okay. Now pretty close. And we're good. So now down. Mm-hmm. I just start feeding it in. Where's your safety glasses? You need them? You want some safety glasses? I'll stand back here. You got the camera now. Yeah, I'm, I'm <laughs> using a $400 camera to block my... It's 500. Oh, 500, my bad. 550, yeah. So should I zero it in just the heck of it? Any of the eggs, Yeah. I can make the peels by myself. Yeah, you can make them as big as you want to. If you knew what you was doing, you could probably set the feed rate up for the perfect cut. But I don't know. It's making it's making chips, so stuff's happening. Probably a little squirt of WD-40 wouldn't hurt a thing for what you're doing right there. There it went. <laughs> now what? Hit the panic button. Well, that didn't work out. What'd you do? <laughs> did it break or did it just come loose? Uh, that. I reckon it broke smooth off. No. Hmm. You got a bandsaw? Uh... <laughs> I got a bandsaw. I'll be back. I'm just gonna go cut it off and then we'll come back and just end mill it in. And I didn't have high hopes for this anyway. Yeah. All right, be back. Pre press the button for me. Oh. I effed up. Oh, cool technology. Still works. What's funny is when Justin bought all his machines, the this was part of it. Well, he didn't have a shop to put nothing in, so I needed a bandsaw, and I've had it for about five, six years now, so I pretty much just own this one, but I, I need a new one. This one don't cut good at all, but it's free, so what do you say? I'm cutting way on this side of it. You can see that right there. And then like I said, we'll come back with a, a better tool and knock that off there. All right, I'm back at it. And I'll just refresh you. I don't know what I'm doing. We're going to keep on doing it, though. Got it roughly indicated in. Should be good enough. Now I got to figure out. I'm going to clean this up and then cut all that off. Yep. So we need a new bit. All right, I'm learning. I'm learning. I got it feeding in by itself. I don't really know how much I can cut at one point. We don't know if we've got dead center or not. We'll see. I don't know what happens from there. Let's turn the feed off. Phone drain. Phone drain. So now I'm not gonna touch anything. I'll back off. And I gotta get it cut down to where I started the cut, I think. That might take just a minute, so I'll pick back up in a minute. So Justin gave me this chuck that I can't seem to figure out. I think it's only for big drill bits, but I found another chuck and I've got one of those kind of bits. So I'm gonna just give me a pilot and then I think this is gonna require me to buy a drill bit because I don't think this jig's gonna get down in there. Yeah, that y'all can see it, it ain't gonna get down in there. So I may have a problem on that one, but we'll see what we can do. So weird which way you go. I think that's the right way. Uh, maybe 
be their own way. It's very confusing. I don't think it was. Hmm. It's very weird. I'll get it figured out. All right, these numbers are mind blowing, but I'm getting there. I'm actually, I actually feel like I'm learning something. So right here is 0 0.590, 590 thousandths. What I'm fixing to say is I know I'm gonna drill all the way through this and tap it because I'm probably gonna end up hammering this in the crankshaft and then I'll have to run a bolt and actually push, push it back out. So I'm probably gonna end up going too far, but I'm using a 9 16 which is Chart, 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 numbers, numbers. So I need to be 590 thousandths. Well, the closest drill bit will be a 1932nd. So I'm 9 16th, which is that. So I'm under that number. So technically, technically, it doesn't even matter really how far I go. I just need to go far enough. Now the next part is wild. This is the boring bar I'll be using. And literally it's within, let's see, that's 500. 90,000, sorry I had the camera off. Oh my gosh, that's only like 20,000 I got to work with. So I think I got a plan, but we'll see. But for now, I can watch it here. So I'm gonna see how far I need to go in there. Working wonderfully, we just got our two inches to go. Justin told me no, I had a great idea. So this table feeds left or right. When you're drilling, you have to sit here and do this. So I was gonna make this thing hook into the back of this and then just click the feed in. For some reason he didn't much care for that idea, so we'll just do it the easy way. Taking longer than we thought. I, I, this whole process, like I thought I'd come over here hour, two hours tops, make the whole thing. No, we're days, days into it. Very short days. To somebody that does this every day, I know we probably look stupid, but this is incredible stuff we're learning here. For us, we don't know the crap. So I went measure, went and looked, 9 sixteenths is 500 and five, 5.625, and I need to be 5.90. So we got everything basically zeroed out, and we're not really trusting that, just kind of a reference. But this thing is literally gonna have to go all the way two inches down there, but I can only measure here. But I guess I ain't even thought about that. Worst case is I just go, and then I come back and do it when I get everything else cut out. But no, man, we... We're machines, we're gonna get this right. So the only thing I can measure off of is right here. So I'm gonna stick it in there and figure out my feed and then keep measuring until I get it right and then send her home. Hope it don't crash. So as you expect, I was completely wrong. I needed to work on the biggest hole first. So I'm going in, I need to go in 800,000. So I'm going in 750, touch off and then cut about, I don't know, I'm still learning how much to cut but then it'll feed its way back out. So pretty sure that's the safest way to do it that I know of. Why would I know how to do anything like this? So while it's doing that, I went and got a pump and I think it's actually to my advantage, it comes apart, which I should have known that. But now I can individually check them. Got a long way to go. And I know I'm probably doing something wrong, but as long as it's getting done, I really care less. Trying to rain on me, but maybe today I can get off this lathe and get to doing something pretty cool. We'll get this lathe work done. I don't necessarily have to do this, but OCD's kicking in. But if you remember, I only downsized the one end, so I'm gonna downsize the entire piece, get it matching. I just couldn't stand it. 100% promise you'll never catch me in a lie. It's just something I don't do. Actually, I got two witnesses that can be here. They were standing here talking, so I turned the camera off. And that hole right there, which is gonna be that one right there, it was supposed to be wherever my numbers, 1.212. Wound up needed to be 1.215. I wouldn't measure in the high part of the splines. Whenever I get this thing turned off, I was just sitting here making pass after pass after pass after pass. And I was using that going like, I don't remember, 250,000 per pass or something. And I know that's not correct, but it was just a number to judge off of. Wait till you see what that number is. So I got a witness, but he's walking away. But I was trying to get this one to essentially the OD of that, and I haven't got all the way down yet, so that's the next process. Just pass after pass, and I stopped and checked it. And again, I'm gonna show you, these are the tools we use, my tool, two O's. Uh, kinda hard to do one-handed, but when you go on the high of the spline, it comes out 2.215. But we're gonna be using Harbor Freight, since y'all can read numbers. You can see 2. 
one four five one five it's that uh, it'll go in there if I can find the sweet spot you can see that's 2.2112 so I nearly screwed up is the word so still got a ways to go it's like I said you can cut more but you can't add more if I would went too far I think I would have had to go too far and then add like a sleeve or something I don't know start all over he, he seen me right yes he did you see me? me so now I think I went like 750 deep I got to go to eight so I'm gonna set this up and get it all set up and go down and then work my way this way I don't do machining but it's definitely very scary doing this stuff I was almost thinking I could just go and not even touch that one and just use this smooth one in there that would probably work, but I'm gonna try to do the best I can on this. Now I've got it down in there. Probably doing it by hand. Put that checker. So, so nothing to see. I put a little chamfer on there, and I wanted to take this piece out and try it on my pump, and my brain clicked. I was like, whoa, watch this. And I did try this earlier. I'm not a liar. I just got done talking, telling y'all. Yeah, probably turn it off. I get to try it out. That's pretty dang good, if you ask me. That's pretty. That's pretty tight. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, clean, clean the dirt off of it, probably. That's 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 good. So we're good on that one. Now I got to work on the two that I can't see doing them blind. That's freaking scary. So, oh, uh, and then yeah, I don't even have to take them out. I can just stick this up in there. All right, getting so close. We was using Mentoro, but I got to thinking I'm doing the next step down there. And if you can use a drill bit, it's much faster, but Justin don't have many. Again, I'm just gonna show you with these. This comes out to 870 or something like that, whatever I got wrote down. But I got to look in three quarters is 750. So I'm gonna go get me a three quarter bit. And then all I gotta do is measure like, oh, uh, I don't know. A few thousands. I had a three quarter, which I've been drilling concrete with and sharpening it with a bench grinder. Then I had a 2764. Turns out that three quarter is 750 and 2764 is 762. So perfect for me. Yeah, this works much better out here. I wish we just had the right drill bit for everything. Once again, I promise I am not making this up. I'll, I'm, I'm laid lucky, I guess is the word. So I was getting my numbers confused. I'm, I wouldn't call them dyslexic, but for some reason, I was thinking 870, and then I was adding them together to get the, uh, let's see, the depth right, because that would be eight, it'd be 1.670. And I was sitting there thinking about it, and I remembered we was trying to get this number to 870. I was like, wait a minute those two don't go together so i didn't add, i didn't say nothing i walked over here realized that i need to be at 838 instead of 870 what do you know i was doing a uh, well hold a camera uh, i was just doing passes with it and if i find the spot it's 8384 so literally that's spot on again <laughs> max you can't eat metal shavings What's it taste like? Max. Hey. Hmm. All right, well, I got that one knocked out, so now it's <laughs> on to the next one. Let's see if, well, I can see if it. You can yep. see if it fits. Yep. yep. No, no, I can't, because this is made together. Okay. All right, we're gonna work on the last one, and then we're done. This is so nerve-wracking, because I'm essentially two inches off in the hole, cannot see anything I'm doing. So yeah, maybe the last pass. I'm just in here feeding it very slowly. I don't want to screw up at this point. This one, it don't matter how deep it actually goes and this don't show up on the screen. So I'm measuring off the table right here. So like that, if I go too far, it doesn't matter. All right, I ain't gonna lie, I got a little scared. So I just left and told Justin to handle it. He's a little more slow, slow uh, cautious than I am. So should go to that green line there on the shaft. That should be good to go. So, 
I think that's literally it. I'm gonna drill a hole all the way through it. I don't think I'm gonna tap it right now. He said you can tap with a lathe. Obviously you can, I'm not, I can do it by hand. But I think I'm gonna do half, half 13 in case I had to buy like all thread rod to go all the way in there. Or I forgot I got a slide hammer. So I'm gonna get a hole drilled through it and should be good to go, honestly. This is so crazy. I hope this works. We freaking got it. Look at it. You can see first one, if you can see, it's a little wiggly. Boom. So by the time I get all three of them together, that'll beat that. I gotta tap it and boom. Tap it in there, try not to booger it up. Slide hammer it out. Good to go. All right, so mine's sitting out here rusting, but I think I need to clean the splines up. It's on its way home, so that should be good. Like I said, this doesn't necessarily control the distance or like the way they line up and down. This is just to get them uh, parallel, maybe is the word. So it starts, so I gotta clean the rust up in there. Tap it and man. This is probably one of the neatest things I've ever done. I know it may not sound like it, but this is gonna be cool. And it's going in a Wrangler that I'm just gonna drive around the pond. I need a tire brush. I don't even remember where to pick it up at. That's a heavy motor. I, ain't, I forgot, I'm probably going to lift the front end up because it went from a 2.5 four cylinder to a 5.2 V8. Those are heavy. We'll worry about that when it runs. Need this too. All right, I was just gonna tap it and then he made me realize you can put this back in the the lathe and then you can put the tap in that uh, drill chali, whatever the thing is, and you can just spin it by hand. That way it don't get like crooked or nothing like that because I ain't got no fancy tools. So I'm gonna run over and do that real quick. So it took a little longer than I was expecting, but now if you can see it's tapped. So it's probably gonna get stuck in the end of the crankshaft, which is cool because it's tighter tolerances there. But now I got a bolt and I'll thread it. And hopefully I won't need it, but this is called a slide hammer. So I'll weld the bolt to something that threads in there and then get it out of there. Could have used my blind hole one, but one step. I gotta get them over here, get the threads, or not the threads, get the end of the crankshaft cleaned up. This is cool. So I tapped it on there with a hammer and it went all the way, which is great. So now it's tight fit. So I made this jig. See if it... Oh, yeah. So I'm gonna try it and crankshaft and then I gotta start bolting stuff together and aluminum weld, that's not good. The way that he had to make it work is just mind blowing. He won't stop talking. So I made some marks on there, had to do a little sanding, but I checked out, it's going all the way in. So that's good. Now I gotta get the bell housing. My biggest fear with this is, and I think I just got to looking. Um, Y'all are making it hard. So I'm, I'm worried that I'm gonna have to slide this down so much that it's gonna not have any material there. Obviously pack job here will come up with something. So yeah, I'm ready to stick them together. I think I can use this to install it. Yes. Slide it the opposite way. Yep. So I know it's gonna be in there good and tight, not sideways. All right, I'm gonna choose regular hammer here. They say not to do that, but I swear when I bought these, they said it was okay. Probably should be wearing safety glasses. So now, I guess I gotta bolt the bell housings on and hope for the best. I got some stuff looking good and then possibly some stuff looking bad, but I mean, what did you expect on a project like this? If you look straight down, kind of touch both surfaces, you're gonna see just a pinch of the uh, adapter which we know stops over where the splines end right there. 
So if you look straight down through there, should be good on that. I am kind of worried about this because it's kind of hard to explain, but I think it's gonna be way too low, but it ain't like I can change anything. So we'll figure something out. So let me figure out how to put these two together. All right, let's see. I'll lay off on that. Probably get Justin standing there doing nothing to help me, and this would be smooth. Doing nothing? Are you doing something? Try to make my Jeep run. Uh, don't block the camera. Let me pick up on this a little bit. I think when I'm hammering on that, I probably put a little booger on there, so I may have to just force it to get started, maybe. Huh. You mean to tell me you, you got them nice big rolling wheels and you get those ones with parking brakes on them? No, all you do is use a washer. Oh, okay. I wonder if you're just going to have to ratchet strap it and not me tap it together. More than likely, because it needs, it needs to come up anyway, so probably pick up a little bit right here. Well, I've got a ratchet strap. Yeah, I was like, pick up a little bit right here and put a little pressure on them and then tap it in there. If all your measurements are right. That is one thing too I forgot. I got to get the twist of them. I don't guess it really technically matters, but I'm, do, I'm trying to be professional about this. So you're so you're gonna weld all this up? <laughs> Y'all ain't seen me weld yet. <laughs> you ain't seen me weld aluminum. You thought my steel welding was bad. So I, I would get I would get a ratchet strap. Go to something right here. I think here. we just need a hammer. Yeah, just hit it with a hammer. Man, it already looks good. Touchdown. Very close. What do you think, honey? You don't say nothing? Uh, this is all for you. All for me. Why would I want a Wrangler with a V8? <laughs> oh, I have a lucky one. Yeah. I gotta re-drill these to phase the transfer case different than the Cherokee. I got to thinking I could just twist the transmission. That would, that'd make a lot of people mad. <laughs> that the, the transmission's gonna be sitting there crooked? Yeah, I gotta re-phase the, I gotta re-drill these holes so the trans, a Wrangler sits flat and a Cherokee dips for the floor pans. Yeah. Tell people I cut my bell housing in half and twisted my <laughs> transmission. That'd, uh, that, that'd bother some people. Could be better, could be worse. It's actually working, which is absolutely amazing. So I got some good contact there. Should center off that one. Obviously we got a big gap up here, but it's working. That's the crazy part. Oops. Said I did a thing. That one barely caught, so I'll probably have to like pry back out on it. But it's good down there. I'm out of breath. Now we just got a lot of welding. What I was saying, like obviously that's probably a center line. Look at that one. So I've got to twist all this, get it phased up. Just right, so. Gonna get my welder drug out. And then hopefully I can get them back apart. That was a lot. You gotta get your welder out? Yeah. I'm playing with gas. Every single time. If somebody's welding or grinding, somebody's messing with gas in this shop. I don't know what it is. All right, I'm gonna turn you off for a second. All right, so I've got a spool gun. I'm horrible at it, but it's gonna work. And I've got some pieces of metal cutting over there, like some quarter inch thick. I had to give them 100% argon out. Spool gun runs off my MIG machine. So I don't reckon I'm gonna show much of this. It's just gonna be a very time consuming thing. And once I get it welded, I can take it off and then I can weld it inside out. Make it bulletproof, the right around the yard with.
Man, this is so cool. This is so cool. I've never done nothing like this. Got a bunch of pieces tacked up there, welded the top two. Oh yeah. It's actually not gonna look that bad when I get done. So I'm surprised by that. And I've got some of this 3H rod. And I think for absolute no reason, I'm just gonna put some pieces right here just for haters to comment on. So not for sure, I might not waste my time, but if you see them on there, that's why. That should be fine. So hope I can still get it apart after I weld it. I don't know if I've actually said it in the video, but I bought that for my wife on Valentine's Day. It's uh, December 24th. Maybe I can get it done by Valentine's Day, this Valentine's Day, but look at the welds. Man, those are nice. Oh yeah. So now I just hope that it'll come apart. It was kind of a forceful to go together, but I don't know if it's just out of line, so maybe it'll just, maybe. Well, I never tightened that bolt, so that's easy enough to start. It moved. I don't know. Oh, you got well splatter oh, on it. It was so pretty. I had such a shiny. I made all the. God, you got well splatter everywhere. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Ooh, I'll let y'all see that in a second. It's a. I'm a good welder on aluminum. There's some wire. At least it's got some drains there. Now, I wonder if the torque converter will fit. It should. Cause it's an AW4. Yeah, it should fit. Pretty sure. Yeah, it's got plenty of room. Well, I'll check. Oh, these things never get any lighter. Ooh. <laughs> Close. Yeah. Gotta get it set back off in there, but it's uh, it's close on the bottom. I thought it fit because it's AW4 and then it was enlarged. Wow. Yeah. So far, everything's looking good. I'm gonna pop this thing off there and put some more nasty welds and uh, blankets. Gotta get this puppy out. You gonna start selling these conversions to the public? That's what sucks. Like this tool, I, I would almost rent it. But the other day I was in O'Reilly and I seen the Harmonic Balancer rental, rental tool they don't take care of nothing so if you're somebody i know or know that'll take care of it we might do some talking but we gotta see if this even works out first so yeah it's gonna work well, i don't you know, i mean i don't know what the converter is going to do with this motor here all right some more information from hack job here got a big gap at the bottom gotta fill up so i went and got this 3h rod found something so i'm gonna see if i can curve it around there and then cut off the excess Works pretty good. Probably easier to straighten it back out than to uh, add more so I'll cut that off and see how it fits I ain't figured out how to time lapse on this camera yet got it all right got it cut watch out this almost perfect I'm gonna hit it one time right there two times 
Ta -da. All right. Well, now I got to do a bunch more welding. And then, legitimately, I think I'm done. If the converter bolts up, I got to drill the tail housing. I forgot about that part, but I'll show you when I get there. Man, I, I chose the wrong profession. I, I probably should have looked into welding. Just look at them. Zoom in. Some of them's like one single pass. <clears throat> oh, what is all that? Mm -hmm. That's not good. Oh well. This is crazy. I know somebody's gonna be like, hey, it's already been done, but I personally have not done this, so I feel good about it. My Benjamin Button cat that gets younger every day. So if you didn't know, like a Wrangler, the transfer case kind of sits flat and then like a uh, Cherokee, Grand Cherokee, it actually drops down to clear the seat. Got to get them holes drilled and then I got to cut the factory motor mounts off and start going together. And I just forgot, I sold the only transfer case I had. That was dumb, so I got to come up with one of them. I don't think I've showed it in this video, but you can see there's extra meat right there and there and there and there and there and there. So I got to find a way to get them perfectly actually it don't even matter it's hub centric so i mean if they're too big it technically don't matter but i'll try to do at least a decent job so it's worth taking that off putting in the drill press so i'm gonna let that cool and i'll do that in the morning this is gonna be so cool i guess i'm glad i took that off there's a dirt dubber back there hanging on to the speed sensor uh gonna get all that cleaned up i don't even know if fluid goes back yeah fluid goes back there so get that cleaned up hopefully the transmission is good and then this is what I was going to show you. I've got this tail housing off right here and just got the holes, just kind of eyeballed, whatever. Center pushed them, but I was noticing I went and got a thing and I was checking them. I mean, even from the factory, they're too big. So it hub centrics on that part right there. So the bolts are just there to hold it up there. Hack job stuff there. Could it be better? Yes, but it's next few steps are a lot of just labor intensive. So I'm going to get these holes drilled. Got to cut the factory motor mounts off, and then I got to get the springs out, get it sitting on the ground. So, yeah, I'll see y'all in just a second. Poor Jeeps just keeps on getting more Frankenstein. So I got all these drilled and I was needing a transfer case. Well, turns out Dex didn't have a 231 in a sense. So I look at the floor. This one is a 242 out of a 9345 ZJ. Well, they have like a step in here. So you have to change the input shaft. Pretty much impossible to get rid of. And I forgot this was rusted too. And I was taking a hammer and actually busted that off there really probably doesn't matter but i don't want to sell it like that so i'm gonna take it apart put the input shaft in it glue this stuff up or probably jb weld it up there whatever so this will work for me be the first jeep with a 240 tj with a 242 that i know of i was gonna go with a wj because i have even more of them but i'm pretty sure aw4 needs speed sin signal i don't 100 know that because it uses the output speed sensor but May just be for the cruise control, but better safe than sorry on something like this. So I'm gonna get this changed and knocking everything out. I got to thinking, I probably need to do a video on this. Oh, like if you're going from a 21 spline to a 23 spline, or if you're going the other way, cause like, like Wranglers that need the 21 splines, you're, uh, you're about in trouble. There's not, you can take one out of a Renix Cherokee. We'll do that another day. But oh, uh, like I said, it's pretty common for me do, doing this you can see about halfway down there three quarters of the way there's like a, a piece of smooth why they did that i have no idea but like this one's dirty but it's splined all the way back through there i don't know clean it up a little bit i'm gonna slap this back together and i know y'all care less i woke up christmas day and i reckon i got the flu of course there's no doctor but you can see december 25th so that's how I'm spending my holiday. But it's mostly stuff I enjoy, so I'll get over it.
Hope so, or hope anyway. Work smarter. Oh, let's see. Maybe it'll just go on there. Oh. There's one or two. It takes some convincing, but it's on the way. I know y'all don't care, but I'm like, DZ is all get out, so I'm gonna call it. I think this is a good stopping point. Now we just gotta get the motor in the Jeep. So I feel like that'll probably be a whole video. I'm proud. I never never thought I'd be here. We'll clean that up, JB weld it, let it be drying. Until next time. Thank y'all.